Greek Mythological Creatures Antaeus was a figure in Greek and Berber mythology. In Greek sources, he was the half-giant son of Poseidon and Gaia. His wife was the goddess Tinge. And he had a daughter named Alceus or Bars. He was famed for his loss to Heracles as part of his twelve labors. Antaeus fought Heracles as he was on his way to the Garden of Hesperides as his eleventh labor. Heracles realized that he could not beat Antaeus by throwing or pinning him. Instead, he held him aloft and then crushed him to death in a bear hug. The Amphisbena is a mythological, ant-eating serpent with a head at each end. Its name comes from the Greek words Amphis, meaning both ways, and Banian, meaning to go. According to Greek mythology, the Amphisbena was spawned from the blood that dripped from the Gorgon Medusa's head as Perseus flew over the Libyan desert with it in his hand, after which Cato's army then encountered it along with other serpents on the march. Amphisbena fed off of the corpses left behind. In Greek mythology, the Allodi, or Allodes were Otis, or Otos, and Ephialtes, sons of Ephimdia, wife of Aloeus, by Poseidon, whom she induced to make her pregnant by going to the seashore and disporting herself in the surf or scooping sea water into her bosom. From Aloeus they received their patronymic, the Alodi. They were strong and aggressive giants, growing by nine fingers every month nine fathoms tall at age nine, and only outshone in beauty by Orion. Alcyoneus was a traditional opponent of the hero Heracles. He was usually considered to be one of the Gigantes, giants, the offspring of Gaia born from the blood of the castrated Uranus. According to the mythographer Apollodorus, Alcyoneus' confrontation with Heracles was part of the Gigantomachy, the cosmic battle of the giants with the Olympian gods. In Apollodorus' account Alcyoneus and Porphyrion were the greatest of the giants, and Alcyoneus was immortal as long as he was in his native land. When Heracles shot Alcyoneus with an arrow, Alcyoneus fell to the ground but then began to revive, so on the advice of Athena. Heracles dragged Alcyoneus out of his homeland where Alcyoneus then died. In Greco-Roman mythology, Arachne, is a talented mortal weaver who challenged Athena, goddess of wisdom and crafts, into a weaving contest. This hubris resulted in her being transformed into a spider. There are many versions of the story's weaving contest, with each saying that one or the other won. Arachne lent her name to the taxonomic class Arachnida, which includes spiders. Argus Panoptes, guardian of the heifer Nymphio and son of Arister, was a primordial giant whose epithet, Panoptes, all-seeing, led to his being described with multiple, often 100, eyes. The epithet Panoptes was applied to the titan of the sun, Helios, and was taken up as an epithet by Zeus, Zeus Panoptes. In a way, Walter Burkert, a German scholar of Greek mythology and cult, observes, the power and order of Argos the city are embodied in Argos the neat herd, lord of the herd and lord of the land, whose name itself is the name of the land. In ancient Greek, the word Ketos Latinized as Cetus denotes a large fish, a whale, a shark, or a sea monster. The sea monsters slain by Perseus and Heracles were each referred to as a Cetus by ancient sources. 
The term cetacean, for whale, originates from cetus. In Greek art, ceta were depicted as serpentine fish. The name of the mythological figure Ceto is derived from Ketos. The name of the constellation Cetus also derives from this word. In Greek mythology, Charon or Charon is the ferryman of Hades who carries souls of the newly deceased across the river Styx. An Acheron that divided the world of the living from the world of the dead. A coin to pay Charon for passage. Usually an obelisk or danaic, was sometimes placed in or on the mouth of a dead person. Some authors say that those who could not pay the fee, or those whose bodies were left unburied, had to wander the shores for 100 years. In the Catabasis mytheme, heroes, such as Aeneas, Dionysus, Heracles, Hermes, Odysseus, Orpheus, Pirithus, Psyche, Theseus and Sisyphus, journey to the underworld and return, still alive, conveyed by the boat of Charon. The Chimera was, according to Greek mythology, a monstrous fire-breathing hybrid creature of Lycia in Asia Minor, composed of the parts of more than one animal. It is usually depicted as a lion, with the head of a goat arising from its back, and a tail that might end with a snake's head. And was one of the offspring of Typhon and Echidna and a sibling of such monsters as Cerberus and the Lernaean Hydra. The term Chimera has come to describe any mythical or fictional animal with parts taken from various animals, or to describe anything composed of very disparate parts, or perceived as wildly imaginative, implausible, or dazzling. Cyclops in Greek mythology and later Roman mythology, was a member of a primordial race of giants, each with a single eye in the center of his forehead. The word Cyclops literally means round-eyed or circle-eyed. All the other sources of literature about the Cyclopes describe the Cyclops Polyphemus, who lived upon an island, often identified by ancient authors with Sicily, populated by the creatures. Various ancient Greek and Roman authors wrote about Cyclopes. Hesiod described them as three brothers who were primordial giants, Brontes, Thunderer, Sterapes, Lightning, and the Bright Argesh. King Diomedes of Thrace was the son of Ares and Cyrene. He lived on the shores of the Black Sea ruling the warlike tribe of Bystones. He is known for his man-eating horses, which Heracles stole in order to complete the eighth of his twelve labors, slaying Diomedes in the process. Heracles encounters King Diomedes through performing his eighth labor. Eurystheus, king of Tyrans and Heracles' cousin, had sent Heracles to capture the mares of Diomedes after he had completed his seventh labor, capturing the Cretan bull. Heracles traveled to the shores of the Black Sea to meet King Diomedes. He was said to have been the son of the god Ares and Cyrene, who is said to be the daughter of Hypsius, king of the Lapiths. King Diomedes was a savage, he enjoyed feeding strangers and prisoners to his mares. They did not like the taste of oats and grain, instead they feasted on human flesh, which their master gave them willingly. His mares could not be controlled, they were savage, just like the king. They could not be tethered by regular rope, instead they needed to be tethered to a bronze manger by chains, so they would not escape. Dryad is a tree nymph or tree spirit, in Greek mythology. In Greek dryas signifies oak. Thus, dryads are specifically the nymphs of oak trees, though the term has come to be used for all tree nymphs in general. Such deities are very much overshadowed by the divine figures defined through poetry and cult, 
Walter Burkert remarked of Greek nature deities. They were normally considered to be very shy creatures, except around the goddess Artemis, who was known to be a friend to most nymphs. The dryads of ash trees were called the Meliae. The ash tree sisters tended the infant Zeus in Rhea's Cretan cave. Gia gave birth to the Meliae after being made fertile by the blood of castrated Uranus. Nymphs associated with apple trees were the Epimeliad, and those associated with walnut trees were the Caryatids. Dryads, like all nymphs, were supernaturally long-lived and tied to their homes, but some were a step beyond most nymphs. These were the Hamadryads who were an integral part of their trees, such that if the tree died, the Hamadryad associated with it died as well. For these reasons, Dryads and the Greek gods punished any mortals who harmed trees without first propitiating the tree nymphs. In Greek mythology, Enceladus was one of the giants, the offspring of Gaia, Earth, and Uranus, Sky. Enceladus was the traditional opponent of Athena during the Gigantomachy the war between the giants and the gods, and was said to be buried under Mount Etna in Sicily. Enceladus was one of the giants, who according to Hesiod, were the offspring of Gaia, born from the blood that fell when Uranus was castrated by their son Cronus. The giants fought Zeus and the other Olympian gods in the Gigantomachy, their epic battle for control of the cosmos. A giant named Enceladus, fighting Athena is attested in art as early as an Attic black figure pot dating from the second quarter of the 6th century BC. In literature, references to the giant occur as early as the plays of the 5th century BC Greek tragedian Euripides, where, for example, in Euripides Ion the chorus describes seeing on the late 6th century temple of Apollo at Delphi, Athena brandishing her gorgon shield against Enceladus. Although traditionally opposed by Athena, Virgil, and others have Enceladus being struck down by Zeus. In Euripides' comic satyr play Cyclops, Silenus, the drunken companion of the wine god Dionysus, boasts of having killed Enceladus with his spear. In Greek mythology, Gerion son of Chrysaor and Caloroe and grandson of Medusa, was a fearsome giant who dwelt on the island Erethea of the mythic Hesperides in the far west of the Mediterranean. A more literal-minded later generation of Greeks associated the region with Tartessos in southern Iberia. Gerion was often described as a monster with human faces. Thank you for watching.